everyone. Today we're doing one of my favorite things. We're making hibiscus flower jelly. I have a Latino friend and whenever he goes and visits his family in the bigger cities down south, he always brings me back hibiscus flower for me to make jellies and tea out of. And after lots of experimentation, watching lots of videos, I finally perfected my personal recipe. So I want to share it with you. If I can, I will try to leave a link in the description down below for where you can possibly find it. Um, otherwise, hopefully you can find it in your stores if you live in a bigger place. I do live in a rather big city, but unfortunately, they don't sell it here. All right. What I want is half a pound of hibiscus flowers, which is eight ounces, or approximately four cups. Then I have over here 12 cups of water. Now all I do is dump it in and boil it. It'll boil down to about 10 cups of water, 9, 10 cups of water, and we boil it for about 2 hours. That's all there is to getting the juice essentially that we want from this, the tea that we're going to be making our jelly out of. The next thing I have is I have their cone sugar. He always brings me this also. Now if I'm using this, I use a cup and a half of this. And what I do is I take this and I just grate it with cheese grater. Now, if you don't have this and can't get a hold of this, because this can be rather difficult to find, that's why he brings it to me when he goes down south. You can use regular sugar. I have used regular sugar. And if you're using regular sugar, you're going to want to use two and a half cups. Now, this here is cane sugar mixed with molasses. It's kind of like brown sugar but they put it in a big cone and they press out as much of the liquid as possible and it becomes these little cones. So then all I'm going to do is grate a cup and a half of this sugar and let those hibiscus flowers boil. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to try to leave some links in the description down below on the health benefits of hibiscus tea. Now the jelly will give you the same benefits that the tea will except for this way you can then get your kids to have it. Kids might not necessarily like the tea. My son, I'm lucky, loves it. Whenever our friend comes back and brings us my big box of ingredients, my son gets so excited because he calls it the heart tea because it's really good for your heart. Like I said, I'll try to leave descriptions, links in the description below so that you too can read about the different benefits. It's really good for your heart. And that's why my son calls it the heart key. And he gets so excited and they call it flower jelly. I'm gonna get all this grated down get it all measured up and we'll be back after the flowers have boiled for a while and I want to have got my sugar. We've been boiling for about 45 minutes and as you can see most of them have sunk and fallen and they're big and plump. You can let them boil longer 
and there's you got to make sure that you boil them till they're at least extremely squishy very 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 squishy and you can boil them longer if you want I've boiled them for as much as an hour and a half before all it does is make the water go away doesn't really give you any extra of the nutrients from the flowers so now that they've been boiling for 45 minutes and they're done you can tell like I said most of them is sunk they're only coming up to the surface with the boiling of the bubbles so we're going to turn it off and the flowers have gotten so fluffy they're filling up so much of the water all right then we're going to let these sit for about five to ten minutes before we drain them man my camera is so steamy all right we'll be back when we're ready to drain these and separate these now i'm going to give you a big tip these are hibiscus flowers they're going to stain anything they touch anything hence why i've got towels and all that all over my countertops because it will stain my countertops any cheesecloth you use will be permanently stained I throw all my cheesecloth away right away. I don't ever reuse any of my cheesecloth. But we'll be back when we are ready to drain. Here we go. We're going to strain it. Now remember, hibiscus flour. This is going to stain anything it touches. That's why every pot or pan that I use is stainless steel, including my ladle, so I don't have to worry about staining. And I've got towels down so I don't have to worry about dripping and staining of my countertops. Make sure you use a towel you don't mind staining. That's why I'm using a Christmas towel because red stains will not look odd on a Christmas towel. And all we're going to do is drain it all because all we want is the tea because we're going to turn the tea into jelly. I'm going to get all this going and drained and oops. We'll be back. All right, there it is, all drained. Now what we're going to do, and the flowers get huge and floofy. That's right, floofy when they're all cooked up. I'm sorry, I'm trying to do this very carefully. They get, they like almost quadruple, get four times bigger in size than they were. I'm going to wrap. Twine around this or try to and get this draining. Like I said, it'll stain anything. I'm going to let that sit and drain for a while. Probably take a good half hour for it to completely drain. We will be back to show you what to do with the next step where we actually turn this big pot of tea into actual jelly. We'll be back. I drained and strained all the hibiscus flour tea and now in my heavy bottom stock pot I have six cups. Whenever you're making jams and jellies you don't ever want to have more than six cups 
of the fruit or juice or tea. So I've got six cups in here. Then I have my cup and a half of that sugar that I grated. Now, I've never tried to use brown sugar from here. Um, I've never bought store-bought brown sugar and tried to use it because I make my own brown sugar. And I use black strap molasses in my brown sugar. So I don't know how that would act in here. Although I don't know what kind of molasses is in this sugar. So you can try it with brown sugar from here. Um, now I know if you use regular sugar, and I have done that, you want to use two and a half cups. Now I have my homemade pectin. And it's just in a little bit bigger jar. Because I didn't have the small jars at the time. The pectin and the lemon juice never count as the amounts of liquid. Because they're going to boil out. But we need the chemical reaction that is going to be created by them. Now if you're making, or if you're using store-bought pectin, I'm not sure how to use it. I've tried to use it a few times. I failed every time I tried to use it. But I do know it's something like boil it, bring it to a boil, put your pectin in, stir it, bring it back up to a boil, boil for a minute, turn it off, and it sets or something like that. Can't help you with how it works because I don't use store-bought pectin. I use homemade pectin. The pectin that I want is at the bottom of my jar because it always settles. So I just make sure I get it good and mixed up. I'm going to open that up and put it in. And then a quarter cup of lemon juice. You always need the lemon juice, especially when doing homemade or you will have fails. I have learned that the hard way. Quarter cup. There we go. Stir it all up. Then we're gonna put it on the stove and bring it up to a boil and start the boiling process to boil it down and make it our jelly. We'll be back. Okay, we're on the stove and I turned it on and you don't ever want to have your jams and jellies above medium or above six because that could lead very easily to scorching and we do not want scorching and all we're gonna do is start boiling now if you have a candy thermometer that is a wonderful thing and you're gonna want I'll pull out my candy thermometer and see and put it in here so I can show you guys temperatures, but I don't use a candy thermometer anymore. I've boiled so much. I'll show you how to test for sheeting off your spoon. I still get fails, but very rarely. So I'm going to let this start to boil, bring back bring you back I'll have my thermometer and I'll show you what's going on we've been boiling for 25 minutes stirring every minute and we're still only at 215 degrees and it's gonna take a while Especially when you're making flour teas, flour jellies, there's a lot of water that you're boiling out and it's going to take a while. I'm not going to make you sit here and wait for all of it. I'll bring you back only near crucial points and let you know how long I've been boiling. We'll be back. Hey everybody, I have been boiling for 50 minutes 
and it's still not done yet. That uh, is very common and very typical. Remember, this is a flower jelly, so almost all of the water needs to boil out before it starts to even begin to thicken. After stirring, you always want to check your temperature after stirring. Always. After temperature, we're at 220. I'm just going to keep stirring, keep boiling. That's all we can do at this point. We'll be back. Hour and ten minutes. Okay, you can very much tell now. Right now, it's at about a pancake syrup consistency or quality. And the temperature is 125. You want our temperature between 130 and 135. 135 would be perfect. But I go until it starts sheeting. And it's not yet sheeting. If you can see, it's still really liquidy and call comes off in a liquid form so we're gonna let it go for another couple minutes and like I had said before 90% of it of the water boils away oh this is gonna be wonderful it smells wonderful It doesn't take much time at this stage, so I'm going to stay right here and supervise it. You want to be close. It can scorch really easy. It's very important that you stay right here and you almost never stop stirring because it will scorch easy. Oh. Smells like hibiscus perfume. If you can see, let's do this again. Get this stirred so it doesn't scorch. It's getting there, it's getting really close. It's now at a little thicker than a pancake syrup. Let's pull it off. And then if you turn it the other way. See that thick sheeting and folding that's going on? We're almost, almost there. Our temperature, 128, 129, we're so close to 130. You'll, you will see it thicken and you will see the bubbles and the boiling. You'll actually see it visibly thicken when it gets to the point that we want it at. See, as we're stirring it, the boil will not go away. The bubbles do not go away. Another sign that we're getting really close. Another is in the center here. See how it's kind of will form a little clear area? And the edges of the clear area will start to look thick. Like jelly. There we go. You see the bubbles really starting? Here 
it is. This stage can happen so quick. So we do not want to walk away or stop stirring for any more than a second or two because it can scorch very easy. See on the spoon here how it's sheets? It looks like that is what we want. See that beautiful, you can see how much thicker the bubbles are and how much thicker the boiling is. The longer we boil this, the thicker the jelly will be. So I'm going to turn it off. We've been boiling for an hour and 10 minutes and this is a good sign that you're finished when you stir it and it reacts by bubbling and foaming more. And then as you pull it up, you see how thick that is and how it drips off. See how it looks like it sticks to the spoon? And it's a big thick that means you're done and you've reached temperature. See that foaming it does? That, especially when you're doing flour jellies, is a key sign that it's done. Then we're just going to turn it off. Let it cool for five minutes and then come back. Put it in our jars. Okay, it's been five minutes and one sign, another way to tell whether or not your jelly has set is if you tip, see that skin and how it's a big film and skin on the edge. Another great way is if you look at your spoon that you were just using, see that big glob on the spoon, how it doesn't move. All this in here is still warm, so it's not set. Whereas this that's been sitting for five minutes is set. See how it doesn't come off at all? It stays in one spot. Big thick clump. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to put this into our jars and get it ready for processing. I've washed and sterilized my jars. I baked them in the oven on three, 250 degrees. You can do it at 215, but I always overdo it on anything to make sure you're as sterile as possible. So. 250 degrees for 20 minutes. Then we're just going to put our jelly in there. We're going to get it in all of our jars and then we'll be back for the next step. I wanted to show everybody something really quick. When I first started doing jams and jellies, I was so confused about what sheeting was. See how it's coming off the spatula? Not in liquidy, runny drips. but like a sheet off of a bed or more like thick taffy that is sheeting we'll be back now what we're going to do is wipe and sterilize the rims so I have a bowl of water and it has apple cider vinegar in it and hot water and then I'm just going to wipe off the rim. See all that stuff that was on the rim? And then 
lids into the hot water and apple cider vinegar for just a few seconds. These new lids, you're not supposed to get them hot, but I like to sterilize them. You're not supposed to boil them and soak them. You're just supposed to stick them on. I don't like that. So I always, always, oop, that lid's no good. Then we're going to put the rings on, put them into the canner, and process them. And now we're going to process the jars for 25 minutes. Put them on boiling, bring it up to a boil, or put it on high, bring it up to a boil, and boil it for 25 minutes. We'll be back. We've been boiling and processing for 25 minutes, so we're just going to turn it off and let it sit for 5 minutes. Those ones with stickers on them. I have stickers on them because I put cherries in them while they were setting so that the cherries would fall throughout. Fresh cherries would fall throughout it. They're for my friend who wanted cherries in hers, so I have hers labeled. And then all the rest. And I'm even making more. I had a pound of hibiscus flowers. So I've been making non-stop jams and jellies. And I even have more to process. We'll be back when everything is done. And I'll show you what a pound of hibiscus flowers gets you. We'll be back. And there we have it. One pound of hibiscus flowers got me 20 jars of jelly. Now these two jars have cherry in it. And that's why they have this label on it. As the jelly was setting, I dropped cherries in there and then process them. Alright, thank you for coming along on this adventure. I hope to see you in the next one. I plan on doing many different videos on using flowers and flora and fauna in many different ways other than the conventional ideas. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up down below. And like and subscribe and come back for more adventures. And remember everyone, stay positive. You can do it too. Bye.